hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are well and i hope you guys are staying safe if you're new here welcome welcome my name is ayatollah the creative director of so unique badini and the content creator of this channel diy with so unique badini and this channel was created just for you to help you with your sewing and crafts journey so if that sounds like something that you're interested in definitely definitely consider subscribing and all you need to do to subscribe is hit the subscribe button right here on the screen as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you we'll love to have you in this family we're big enough to accommodate you and we're so excited to have you join us if you're if you're a returning subscriber welcome back you guys are absolutely amazing thank you guys so much for the love and for the support especially on the last or on the on the um, what's it called the last video related to this so if you're wondering what I'm saying in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to cut different kinds of necklines however if before then I am going to be explaining different kinds of necklines so that's why I have my assistant with me this mannequin here today so if you haven't already seen the video that you know follows this one or the one before this one um, I'm going to put a link in the iCards above as well as in the description but you guys absolutely love the video and it was when I talked about how to finish necklines and I introduced you know finishing necklines with a bias or with the facing method so if you haven't already seen that go ahead do catch up you know you know see that video you guys absolutely loved it you know the love of it is the love on it is amazing so that's why i just said yeah a lot of people requested i show you guys how to cut different necklines and in this video that's what we're going to be doing so without further ado we're going to get right into it All right guys, so to cut different necklines, I have decided to bring my mannequin here to assist me. And the reason I decided to do that is I'm going to be running through a couple of basics that we need to know. And I don't know if we already know it. So I'm just going to be running through. And I've got my, um, what's it called? body line tape that i got from my friends at technical foundations i don't know if you guys remember if you haven't already seen the video i did on how to use this tape i put a link in the icons above but i've got my tape here so i'm just going to be using my black tape to do like my basic markings and explain certain things to you so i might not be looking at the camera as much but i want you guys to follow me okay um yeah so just follow me i should have gotten myself a pair of snips so first things first when you're working with the human body usually when we're sewing we sew in halves right we sew in halves and that's because the human body is divided into half so usually when we're working with the human body we kind of just sew in halves assuming that we are dealing with only one side of the front and one side of the back meaning that we just leave the side of the of the um of the front and this side of the back so we focus on just half so again when you're working with the human body we sew in we work in halves so i'm just going to be dividing my mannequin and i'm using this because i don't want to ruin my mannequin with like a marker or something excuse the squeaking noise if you hear any okay so like i said we work in half so right now i have divided my mannequin in half at the front right and obviously at the back we work in half as well now in case you don't already know you some people say things like um high waist to be honest you don't necessarily have high waist you have your true waist okay so this is your true waist your true waist is supposedly the smallest part of the human body this is the true waist now when you're working with necklines you have two different types of necklines you have the symmetrical necklines and you have the asymmetrical necklines when you talk about symmetrical the, as the name implies symmetrical necklines are anything or is any neckline that whatever you have happening on one side happens on the left side it is symmetrical right so i'm going to go over that again it's a neckline that whatever you have here is a direct replica or a mirror of the other side so if you have something here you have the exact same thing on the other side however when you have asymmetrical asymmetrical necklines whatever is happening on here does not repeat itself here so example when you have your round neck your round neck is usually very symmetrical meaning that whatever you have here is what you have here okay so i'm going to run and just show you guys different kinds of necklines so with the basic one we're going to do our basic round neck line here okay 
guys this tape is so good okay so this is a basic round neckline i hope it's not wobbly but this is a basic round neckline it's symmetrical whatever you see here is what you have on the other side of the um mannequin or the body form now i'm going to go over and show you guys what an asymmetrical neckline is and like i said earlier an asymmetrical neckline whatever you have on one side doesn't necessarily have to happen on the other side and that's where it gets the name asymmetrical neckline so i'm taking out my um red body line tape for that to just quickly show you guys what an asymmetrical neckline is or should look like and i'm sure you guys are familiar with some of the common ones like we have the mono strap which is fairly common so you know when you have necklines that are like that that is like that and you have you know some fairly common necklines okay Oops. So this is a mono strap neckline that I've just done with red. As you can see, unlike the black one or the round neckline, the round neckline, whatever you have here is happening here. It's a mirror effect. However, with the asymmetrical necklines like the mono strap, what you have here is not repeated on this side of the bodice. It's absolutely different. So that means when you're cutting your asymmetrical necklines you cannot afford to have your pattern or your fabric unfold because the necklines that you have are totally different another asymmetrical neckline that you might have seen would be all these necklines that you know appear as say you have it like a square first right and then i'm just going to do like a combination i hope this doesn't really confuse you guys actually having so many necklines on here okay now i hope i'm not confusing you lot but can you see this line from here to here that is another neckline and it's another asymmetrical neckline so it starts off looking like a square and then it goes over to form like a scoop neck so i don't know if you guys can see it i've done three different necklines on this mannequin i've done my round neck which is the symmetrical neckline so a example of uh, many of the necklines that we have are actually symmetrical and i'm going to put a couple of examples so we have the round neckline we have the scoop neckline we have the square neckline we have the um alter neck we have the queen anne neckline we've got the v neckline all of those necklines are symmetrical however when it comes to asymmetrical neckline you do not have that many of them so you've got um the mono strap neckline you've got this one i don't know what name to call it but any neckline where you see that whatever is happening on the left hand side is not happening on the right hand side that is an asymmetrical neckline so the next thing i'm going to show you guys is i'm going to show you how to draw four common necklines so we're going to be learning how to draw the round neck today we're also going to be learning how to draw the scoop neck today we're going to be learning how to draw the boat or but two neck which is what people call the boat neck you know that one we're going to be learning how to draw that we're also going to be learning how to draw the v neck so i have mentioned four necklines today we're going to learn how to draw that now when you talk about necklines like the bustier neckline or the sweetheart neckline those ones are formed from getting a tube and usually are symmetrical as well so without further ado we're going to get to the table where i can show you how to draw different necklines that we have all right guys so welcome to the table where we're going to be doing like the practical for the necklines that we'll be learning like i said earlier we'll be learning how to draw the round neckline which is a symmetrical neckline we'll be learning how to draw the scoop neckline the bird batu or the boat neckline as well as the v-neck and i have decided to also throw in one of the symmetrical necklines we'll be doing one of the ones that i did uh, asymmetrical necklines rather so i'll be showing you one asymmetrical neckline just so that you can understand where i am coming from when i say that when we're working 
working with symmetricals, we work with halves. However, with asymmetrical, you have to open it all up. So now I've got um, some paper here. I've got some scrap fabric here. My fabric scissors, my paper scissors, um, my measuring tape, a marker, and my tailor's chalk. When you're working with paper, please never ever use your fabric scissors on your paper it will ruin your scissors so let's go and um, start like i said we'll be starting with some of our symmetrical necklines and to do a symmetrical neckline like i already mentioned you want to make sure that your fabric is folded into two so you see that line i made on the mannequin with my um, black body line tape this is the center line and this is what it looks like on here so this is the center line that we made here and just so you can understand properly i'm going to go ahead and do what i usually do now remember that when you're drafting a freehand what's it called i always ask you to draw your top line that serves as a guide this top line is serving as a guide i hope you guys can see properly is serving as a guide so i've gone ahead to draw the top line that will serve as a guide just gonna pin this down because paper keeps flying up yeah serve as a guide on this top line is where you measure the shoulder so ideally if we were doing this for someone and the person's shoulder is 15 inches half of the shoulder measurement goes here which is seven and a half right so i've gone ahead to mark seven and a half as the shoulder measurements right here okay and if you're going to do the arm hole, you want to go ahead and do the arm hole measurement. So I'm just going to go ahead and just quickly have like a bodice, but without the neckline. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm not going to join the ammo curve or any of those things because it's not important. What's important is that right here, we have the shoulder or the back here. We have the arm all and you guys know how this whole thing goes. So the next thing to do is depending on what neckline you want to do. And I said we're starting with the round neckline. Now you must remember that we're assuming this is our fabric or like whatever it is that we're working on and it's been folded in two. So basically if it's been folded in two, whatever it is that we're doing, when we are putting on the fabric, our fabric must be folded in two as well and we place it. Now, if you're working in pattern, this might not necessarily, with a pattern rather, this might not necessarily be folded in two, but by the time you're placing it on your fabric, it should be on a fabric that's already folded in two. Does that make sense so whether your paper is folded in two or not doesn't really matter but you know when you're cutting it out that whatever fabric you're placing it on should be folded in two now when you're working with round necks the most important thing is what generally when you're working with necklines we have a couple of terms that i want you to familiarize yourself with we have something called the neck width and we have something called the neck depth the neck width is how wide the neck is right usually how wide the neck neck is so if i say a neck width of four you must remember that four here is actually eight because when you open it up it will be wider so you have the neck width which is how wide you want the neckline to be and that goes across your or that that sits somewhere on the shoulder line and then you now have the neck depth which is how low you want the neckline to be so whether you want it to you know leave out some cleavage or you don't want it to leave out some cleavage that is when you talk about the neck depth so when you're working with a round neck whether you want a high round neck or a low round neck the neck the neck width must be equal to the neck depth so for round necks the neck width is equal to the neck depth so let's take a basic round neck you want the neck width to be four inches so i go ahead and mark four inches right here and then the neck depth to be four inches so i also go ahead and mark four inches right here now for many people it is confusing to draw a perfect curve without the aid of any equipment but i'm here to give you like a trick now what you want to do is right here around the neck width you want to make sure you square out this line by an inch so one inch and then you want to make sure you square out this line by an inch as well and this is just a guideline to help you draw the perfect round neck now after you have done this if you're sure of your hands and you can make it strong like a curved line go ahead and connect it if not you can just do dotted lines just to help you create the perfect curve just like that and after you've done the dotted lines you can go ahead and 
and trace it and you will have the perfect round neck now what most people forget to why this is important is what most people do is they just cut this now what you don't know is when you cut this like that sometimes you will not get a perfect round neck it has like a funny shape here i actually got the perfect round neck but that's because i think i actually cut it properly but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you cut the perfect round neck and that helps you and serves as a guideline so here is what the perfect round neck looks like right this is what it looks like so now that i have the round neck done i'm going to go ahead and do on the other side of the paper i'm going to go ahead and show you guys the batu neckline so the batu neckline is what you normally know or call the boat neckline or the Kano neckline and for that one you have a wider neck depth and a really low um a wider neck width rather and a really low neck depth so for a batu or boat neck or Kano neck the neck width is wide while the neck depth is absolutely short and is usually high neck so you see that commonly on a lot of classy evening or dinner gowns um you would see the batu neckline so like i said we assume this is our shoulder we're not assuming actually this is actually our shoulder or our back neckline and you want to measure your neck width uh, your neck width on that neckline so go ahead and do a wide neckline so you can do anything from like five and a half to six inches for a batu neckline so i'm going to go with six inches so if the person's sh uh, shoulder is um 15 and you mark seven and a half that literally doesn't leave you much for the shoulder but that is absolutely fine because when you have wide wide necklines your shoulders are usually a lot smaller so now that we have the neckline here for a batu neckline your neck depth like i said would usually be small so you can do one inch you can do one and a half inches i'm fine with one and a half inches so after doing one and a half inches i would say that you can go in so for this one you can go in for like one and a half or two inches depending on what you want and then you can go ahead and use like a ruler to connect this like so but you're going to be blending all these sharp corners after and then you go ahead and blend because you don't want it sharp just like so just blend it out okay so you have a wide shoulder um neck width rather the neck width is wide while the neck depth is small that's how you get a back to neckline so it's usually very high and when you cut it out you see what happens like so so you have this that's how it sits it's just like a high neck okay and of course it's symmetrical as you can see because when i folded my paper whatever happened on one side happened on the other side that goes to show that it is symmetrical so the next one we're going to be looking at will be the v-neck for the v-neck it's a slightly different ball game so where you have the round neck and you have the neck width for the round neck is equal to the neck depth but for the batu you have the neck width is wider or more than the neck depth for the v-neck you have a, a longer neck depth than neck width that means the neck width is not so much but the neck depth must be more than the neck width so you must know like what you're going for and it will help you or give you a guide to getting what you want so i'm going to go ahead and draw my guideline for the v-neck i will mark the person's um half of the person's back measurement which is right here now if you're doing a v-neck you can use your neck depth of about four or four and a half inches there about i would usually do about four so that's the neck depth four inches now for the neck width you want to go for something at least minimum of five 5.5 i'm gonna go for six so that's it and very easy one of the easiest necklines to draw but maybe not the easiest to finish 
just draw a slant line connecting the two points and there you have your v neck by the time you cut it up you'll see that you have your v neck so we're going to cut it up right now so that we can see that we have the v neck now all these necklines can be finished with the bias or the facing method but you see this v-neck finishing it with the bias method is a bit tricky so i always advise that if you're going to do a v-neck just finish it with your facing um finishing with your bias can be a bit of a hassle so i don't i personally don't like to but when i have no choice i will do it but it's a bit of a hassle i just want you to know so we're just going to move on and we're going to do the scoop neckline and then an asymmetrical neckline okay so the scoop neckline is quite similar to the round neckline the only difference is that instead of having the neck width and the neck depth the same you have the neck width the neck depth lower like you know the v-neck the neck depth is usually lower so you have a much lower neck like and that's what you see on all those tank tops or the vest tops that you would normally um wear so i'm going to go ahead and repeat the same thing draw my shoulder line and then mark half the shoulder measurement on the shoulder line which is seven and a half since that that's what we've been using so for the scoop neck you want to do your neckline so i'm going to use four and a half for the actual neckline and then instead of using four and a half right here if i use four and a half here right here that will give me a round neck but we're not trying to do a round neck we're trying to do a scoop neck so you must use something a bit more you use about six inches okay so after i've done that we use the same trick to get the round neck you come out a little bit here by an inch and then you come down by an inch right here and then you just go ahead and draw the neckline whether you want to use your dotted lines or you just want to go ahead and wing it is entirely up to you and that's it guys we have your scoop neck so it's one of those necklines that is really really um just going to draw another line here so that i can cut this off so the scoop neck neck is one of those lines that you commonly see when you're working with your tanks i'm just going to cut this off and show you so for the scoop neck don't forget again if you need to do a scoop neck you have your neck depth really really like a lot more than your neck width so that's what it looks like in comparison to the round neck it is you know scoop <laughs> as the name implies so that's the round neck in comparison to the scoop neck okay guys so let me show you guys what an asymmetrical neckline is about now like i already said when you talk about asymmetrical necklines you cannot do them when the fabric is on fold because it's going to ruin so what i've just done is now i have my center line you need to know the center of your fabric or you need to know the center of whatever it is that you're doing now that i have my center i can open up my um fabric we're assuming that this is the fabric directly however if you want to do it on paper as well it works after doing that i'm going to go ahead and extend my shoulder line Now, one of the things that help me is when I'm doing my scoop, right? I'm um, sorry, when I'm doing my asymmetrical neckline, while it's unfold like this, I go ahead to do every part of my, of my bodice. So let's go ahead and do our regular bodice. I'm going to go ahead and do the shoulder. Now that we have this and we have it on both sides now we can work so we have this line which is our center line i'm going to go ahead and trace it out with a marker so that it's clear i can see but i don't know if you guys can see the impression so i'll just put the marker point there so that it's clear for all of us to see now you can determine what neckline you want so whether you want it to be a mono strap neckline remember that this is the end of the shoulders and you want your shoulders to be about three inches wide you can do that so if you wanted to be a mono strap neckline you can just go ahead and mark how wide you want your shoulders to be 
how wide you want your shoulders to be. If you want your mono, uh, your mono strap neckline, you know, really deep and your cleavage showing, you must remember that, for instance, if this person's bust point is 10 inches, anything from here would already, from seven and a half, eight, will already expose some cleavage. So remember that this is the bust point. As a guideline, what I always like to do is check the center line when I'm doing wrap dresses or anything that is mono strap that will go across like this this you want to mark the bust point and the bust point in this case is 10 so anything that touches eight inches will begin to show some cleavage whatsoever so you need to be careful when you're doing that so for me um for this i don't want too much cleavage showing so i'll just leave it at seven and a half and then want to do like a mono strap so you must determine where you want it to go even seven and a half is too low because it's a mono strap it's coming from the shoulders and then it's going like that so That's how to do a mono strap. You can see whatever is happening here is not happening here. It's not a direct replica. It's not a mirrored effect of this side. This side is absolutely different from the side. So that is how to draw a mono strap. However, that's not the neckline that I was going to show you guys. So if we're going to do one of the different necklines or one of the ones I did on the mannequin where you have it straight here and then you have it curved here, what you must do is first of all we have our shoulder measurement you want to mark the shoulder measurement the shoulder measurement can actually be the same but the shape is different so let's go ahead and use two and a half inches as the shoulder measurement for this one so i'm going to mark two and a half right here and i'm going to mark the same two and a half right here okay so depending on how low i want it to be uh, if i want it to be about seven i will mark seven here so the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a straight line from here because we have it like a square neckline right so you have that straight now from this other point you want to draw a curve that link here to here so using my guideline let's go ahead and bring this down by one inch so that it's straight and then square this out by one inch so that it's straight we're going to now find a way to connect these two points so whether you have got your pattern master that works easy and makes your life easy or you just got your free hand that also works so just you know use the dotted line method and you know you're good so at this point i'm going to go ahead and connect my two points and that is what it looks like and the reason why i say you must not cut this now imagine if i cut this unfold what i have here is definitely not what i have here you must cut this while it is opened so let's go ahead and cut out the neckline i'm going to be cutting out the neckline that i've used the highlighter for so let's go ahead and cut it out and i'm sure it's not the first time you're seeing this kind of neckline let me know let me know what other necklines that you're interested in in the comments section and i'll see if i can do a tutorial on them However, there are so many necklines that you have, way too many. I doubt that I'll be able to co cover every single thing, but these are like the first basic necklines. At some point, I'll do a neckline, I'll do a tutorial on how to do the bustier and tube necklines. But guys, this is how to do an asymmetrical neckline. So for this one, you have generally, there are no rule of thumbs as to, you know, whether the neck depth is equal to the neck width or something like that. But you must remember that when we are checking out the other necklines, like this one, which is our V neckline, you must remember that for the V neckline, the neck depth, you can see it, the neck depth is more than the neck width. When you're talking about the V neckline, when you're talking about the scoop neckline, the neck depth is more than the neck width as well. When you're talking about the round neckline, the neck depth is equal to the neck width. However, when you're talking about the batu neckline or the boat neckline, the neck width is more than the neck depth. All right, guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comment suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys so much and make sure you stay safe. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.